Hello everyone, welcome to this session on machine learning at scale using Kubeflow with uh, Amazon EKS and Amazon EFS. Uh, my name is Suman Devnath. Um, I'm a developer advocate with uh, you know, the EFS uh, product team and I'm super excited to share a few of the uh, insights about how you can run your machine learning workflow uh, using an open source tool called Kubeflow. Uh, so what we are going to do uh, in next uh, 30 minutes or so, uh, we are going to talk about um, what machine, why machine learning on containers, because that might be a little uh, odd to many of you if you are new to, uh, uh, you know, container space. And we will then uh, dive a little bit uh, around Kubeflow, and then we will straight away uh, jump into the demo, uh, which is more interesting rather than <laughs> uh, there's boring slides. So. First thing first, uh, why machine learning uh, with containers? So if you think about it, uh, you know, uh, it's not only about machine learning, uh, we get the flexibility and uh, all the benefits that uh, any application can get uh, with uh, containers. So if you look at the whole machine learning uh, stack, uh, there are different tools like TensorFlow, PyTorch, uh, and we need different kinds of infrastructure uh, to run this training. So things gets very complicated when you think about uh, different packages, dependencies, and configurations. So what containers helps us to do is, uh, you know, it packages our training code along with all the dependency in a much modular way. And that way, you know, our ML environment uh, gets very lightweighted and it's very much uh, gets portable, right? So you can uh, run your machine learning uh, uh, training jobs or uh, other tasks, uh, you know, independent of the uh, platform. So one of the reasons that why uh, uh, it is even better to run it on Kubernetes is, uh, you know, first is uh, compo uh, composability. So basically you you are, uh, you know, defining your training jobs or you are defining your uh, machine learning task uh, in a granular way. And so that, you know, you can always run it um, at different places. And if you want to uh, make some changes, it doesn't affect, uh, you know, the other jobs in your pipeline. The other thing is uh, you can start today on-prem uh, in your uh, Kubernetes environment and you don't have to change it in future if you want to migrate it to uh, AWS and run the same training job on the cloud. So since it is uh, 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 created uh, as a container uh, on Kubernetes, uh, it, it gets very much portable as we have just uh, discussed a while back. And obviously you don't have to think about uh, the scale uh, because uh, Kubernetes will take care of the infrastructure. So whether you need uh, two instances to run the training job or three inst instances or 10 instances, since the training job is running as a container, uh, you don't have to worry about the backend infrastructure, which is uh, very much valuable uh, for uh, any machine learning engineer or even for any infrastructure engineer. And uh, the best part about this is uh, you don't have to worry about managing this uh, Kubernetes cluster. So you may like to use uh, Amazon EKS, uh, which is our uh, uh, managed Kubernetes service on AWS, which helps you to give, give you the control plane where you can uh, attach your data plane or uh, compute nodes. And it supports, uh, you know, the, you can always get your, uh, you know, Kubernetes upstream experience uh, and you can uh, 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 decide which version of Kubernetes you want, but, uh, you know, you can natively get the upstream uh, Kubernetes experience. So it's it will look, uh, you know, it will feel exactly the same as how uh, it is uh, if you if you have to install and configure Kubernetes uh, on-prem or in your managed, uh, uh, you know, EC2 instances. And it gets uh, integrated with a lot of other AWS services and which we are going to see uh, in a while where we, we are going to, uh, you know, um, run machine learning job um, uh, using Kubeflow on EKS uh, and we are going to save our training data sets uh, on EFS. And uh, one of the other thing is uh, irrespective of uh, uh, Kubernetes is uh, you don't have to build all those training uh, container images uh, from scratch. So we do offer a lot of pre-packaged uh, Docker container images, which are fully configured and validated and 
uh, you know uh, uh, tested uh, rigorously so you you are always uh, get the best uh, uh, configuration and image which you can make use of so you can just what you can do is you can uh, just create your own training script or use the training scripts that we have as a template and uh, make the relevant changes uh, based on your need and requirement um, you can always uh, customize uh, those container images um, and we support different frameworks like tensorflow mxnet pytorch and uh, so on and the best part is uh, you know you can use these uh, deep learning containers uh, uh, not only with uh, eks but with ecs uh, amazon sagemaker and ec2 instances so let's talk a little bit about uh, qflow before we jump into the demo so uh, qflow is basically uh, you can think of it as a machine learning toolkit uh, for kubernetes so it's it comprises of uh, you know various other uh, uh, projects uh, like Jupyter Notebook, uh, Pipeline, uh, training services, um, uh, and inference, uh, you know, or serving. So basically, if you have ever seen uh, uh, Amazon SageMaker, it's kind of a, a similar platform that you will get here. Um, it may not have all those fancy features uh, that SageMaker offers, but uh, if you want to run your uh, machine learning workflow on uh, Kubernetes, and if you want to have a uh, control over uh, your workflow, uh, even at a more granular level, uh, then uh, maybe you can make use of uh, Qflow. And it's an open source project, so you can always uh, contribute to that. And we are going to see in the demo that how you can uh, create a Jupyter Notebook and uh, how you can uh, start a training job uh, on Qflow. Uh, now, one important uh, advantage of uh, using Qflow on AWS is uh, you are going to get a uh, lot of flexibilities and leverage the integration that AWS has with other services. So when you are running Qflow on EKS, you get all the goodness of uh, uh, you know the service integration that we have uh, uh, with EKS. So in this case, we are going to use EFS uh, uh, with Qflow. But if you see here, we have a, a good ecosystem where you can integrate other managed services that we have uh, uh, for better experience for your machine learning workflow when you are running on uh, Qflow. So since we are going to use EFS in our workflow, so let's talk about uh, EFS a little bit, right? Because we uh, we learned a little bit about uh, EKS, which is a managed service for Kubernetes. So let's spend a couple of minutes on EFS. So EFS is a, a simple serverless and set and forget kind of file system, which we just created and you don't have to mention the size of the file system and you can just use it uh, you know anywhere so it you can access that file system uh, from your on premise uh, 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 you know a machine or you can access it from ec2 instance uh, from a lambda function uh, or from a kubernetes cluster and we are going to use uh, efs um, uh, for saving the training data set for our machine learning workflow uh, but it's very much uh, uh, elastic and performant we recently announced a sub millisecond read latency so that means um, uh, in general you will get uh, a latency of 600 uh, you know uh, microseconds uh, for your read workload which is uh, pretty amazing when you think about uh, shared file system on the cloud and it's highly available and uh, durable and we have different classes of storage that you can select from so as we discussed uh, you know efs has an integration with uh, you can access EFS from various uh, different compute services. So one is on-prem or EC2, but uh, we don't stop it there. You can always use EFS with your any of your containers which are running on ECS, which is our managed container service, or uh, on EKS, which we are going to use uh, uh, you know, in our demo. So how to get started with uh, EFS uh, with Kubernetes? So now we are not talking about uh, Qflow in general because we are going to do that in the demo, but uh, I just want to give you an overview of how you can get started with EFS uh, with Kubernetes. So the first thing is you need a, a Kubernetes cluster. So in this case, uh, you know we are creating an Amazon EKS cluster, but this could be very much uh, your own installation of, of Kubernetes on a bunch of EC2 instances where you are managing the Kubernetes cluster. But uh, you know this, uh, we are just taking this example where you know we are creating and managed um, uh, EKS cluster. With, uh, so what that means is you don't have to manage the cluster um, by yourself. Uh, all the pack, uh, you know, patching, uh, you know, uh, version control, and all of that update updates is taken care by uh, Amazon. So first you need to create that EKS cluster, 
and second is we need to create a security group so that uh, you know the EFS file system can be accessed uh, from the EKS cluster and then you have to create an EFS file system. Now we are going to do this uh, uh, through the code uh, in a while but uh, uh, this is how the workflow would look like and the most important thing is you need to install the EFS CSI uh, driver. Uh, so uh, uh this storage driver doesn't come uh, out of the box so once you have your eks uh, cluster uh, if you want to attach efs storage uh, you need to uh, you know install this uh, csi driver right so it's this is also an open source project if you would like to contribute feel free to contribute uh, on this project it's uh, you know we have done a lot of improvements in our csi driver in the recent past so please have a look so once you have created this EKS cluster, you have created the file system and you have installed the CSI driver uh, on the EKS cluster, um, what you can do is you can define a storage class, right? So in the storage class definition, you will provide that file system ID, which we have just uh, created and that's all, right? So after this, you can run your application um, by creating a persistent volume claim and you will define uh, the same storage class which you have used uh, uh, before so here if you see the storage class name that we have given is efs sc you just refer to the same storage class in your pvc definition and once that is done you can mount that uh, pvc in your application or in your in your pod right so in, in this case we are just uh, using the same uh, persistent volume claim whose name is efs claim and if you see this this is the same claim name that we have used to create this pvc so that's all so uh, next time if you want to run another application you will just create uh, another pvc and use it in your pod so you don't have to go back to the storage over and again right so because we are using the dynamic provisioning and the csi driver will take care of creating uh, uh, those access points which is the technology behind uh, provisioning this uh, 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 these uh, PVCs, right? So that's uh, about, uh, you know, how you, uh, a little bit about how you can make use of EFS with Kubernetes. So before we jump into the demo, this is what the architecture uh, of our uh, demo. So we are going to use EFS uh, to st uh, storing our training data set. So in our demo, we are going to download the training data set uh, and uh, we are going to uh, run some training job uh, on Qflow uh, and that a training job is going to access the storage uh, from EFS using the CSI driver. And for our training job, we are going to build uh, an image uh, and then uh, we will push it to ECR, which is our container uh, registry, which is kind of uh, Docker Hub, but it's within uh, AWS. And uh, then we will start the training job on our uh, EKS cluster using Qflow. And it is going to pull uh, the uh, image from ECR, uh, run the training job on the training data set, which is saved in EFS. Okay, so let's jump into the demo and see it all in action. Okay, so I have already opened my AWS console and if you see, um, I am inside uh, Cloud9. So we are going to use uh, Cloud9, which is an IDE for writing uh, your code uh, on AWS. So it will give you a, a nice uh, IDE kind of environment which runs on an EC2 instance, uh, but it's very easy for you to write code uh, as you go along. You don't have the dependency to carry your laptop or you know, workstation. You can just uh, you know, write your code uh, from anywhere as long as you have the internet connectivity. So if you come here and you can see that I have two environments. So uh, I have already opened uh, this environment. You can always create your own environment uh, by clicking on create environment and it will ask you just a few questions about type of EC2 instance you need, what operating system and you are all set. So this is the ID uh, environment that I have. Uh, you know, if you come here and click on open IDE, you will uh, land onto this page. So I have a lot of code here. Uh, you know, I have uh, cloned few of the GitHub repo which I'm going to share uh, in, in a while, uh, but uh, you will get this kind of interface. Okay, so first thing first, so I already have a Kubernetes cluster uh, up and running, and we can see that if you run uh, kubectl get nodes, and we have an EKS cluster with uh, five nodes. I have also uh, installed um, Kubeflow, and if you want to see that, we can see 
uh, all the pods uh, running as part of uh, Kubeflow because Kubeflow, as we have learned uh, a while back, it's a collection of different services. Right? So we have all those, uh, you know, pods running which supports, uh, which are actually uh, running uh, Kubeflow. So the first thing is we need to uh, create an EFS uh, file system. At this point, we don't have any EFS file system created. And if you see uh, kubectl get storage class or SC, you see that uh, the default uh, storage, which is an EBS uh, volume, which is by default when you create a uh, Kubernetes cluster uh, on AWS. Uh, now, the first thing we need to do is we need to create the EFS file system um, and then install the driver and create a storage class. So we don't have to do it all manually. Uh, we have created a script uh, which is uh, located uh, inside this uh, directory and it has some dependencies. So if you see this, uh, you know, auto EFS uh, setup of uh, script, we have some, uh, you know, we are using some external uh, uh, libraries. Uh, so for that, we have one, uh, 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 requirement.txt file. So first let's install uh, all the packages. So I have it installed, so it will just uh, skip all of the installation. So next is we need to uh, run this script. So let me just uh, uh, run this script and then uh, we can go over what the script is doing. So the before I hit enter, I just want to show you a few parameters that we are passing along. One is the region, that means in which region we are uh, creating this uh, file system, which is obviously in the same region where I'm going, to, uh, I have my EKS cluster. So I'm just giving the cluster name, which I've saved in the environmental variable, and uh, then the file system name, right? So before I hit enter, if you come to uh, EFS uh, console and if I hit refresh, uh, we see that there is no file system. So hopefully after this, uh, you know, script uh, gets executed, we will have uh, a new file system. So uh, by the time uh, uh, this runs, uh, let me just quickly show you what the script is doing. So if you see the script is doing uh, just three basic things. One is it is checking few of the prerequisites and what is needed. And then uh, it is creating the uh, IAM roles uh, so that the cluster can access the EFS file system. Uh, then it is going to install that CSI driver, which we just talked about, uh, you know, in the presentation that it need to, uh, you know, um, install the CSI driver so that the Kubernetes cluster can talk to uh, EFS. And then we are just creating a file system. And uh, after that, we are uh, creating uh, a storage class. And this is the storage class. Uh, which uh, uh, we are going to use uh, uh, in the Kubeflow for training our job or even for the notebooks to creating uh, uh, different uh, data stores for keeping our training data sets. Okay, so uh, creating a file system and creating a storage class is something that you can repetitively do as and when you need. Uh, but uh, uh, this uh, setting up the, uh, you know, CSI driver and all of that is just, um, you know, one time activity. So it will take a couple of minutes. So let's wait for this to complete. Okay, as we can see, uh, it has created a file system. Uh, also, it has created the mount targets and it has provisioned uh, a storage class. So to see that, we can just run kubectl get sc. So we can see that, uh, that the storage class which has been created, right? And it is still uh, not the default one. So if we create any anything on Kubeflow, uh, let's say Jupyter Notebook, it will use uh, this storage. But if you explicitly mention this uh, storage class, it will uh, carve out storage from here, okay? So now before we uh, go ahead, if we go to EFS and uh, click on refresh and you will see that, that the file system got created uh, my EFS one and this is exactly the name that uh, we have given uh, you know while uh, parsing the EFS file system name in the script so we are all good now and if you come inside this file system and come to access point which is the entry point um, um, for the application to EFS you see that there is no access point created because uh, we haven't uh, we have just created the storage class but there is no PVC uh, we have uh, claimed or created so the next thing uh, would be uh, let's go ahead and create a Jupyter notebook so to do so first we need to uh, uh, um, run uh, the uh, I think it's already running but let me just stop and uh, start it again so this is the dashboard service or basically uh, stlo uh, service and now if i just go to preview and open the app in a separate uh, not here maybe 
so I'm just closing this off and going back here so now the uh, dashboard is uh, uh, you know up and running and we can see that uh, here and if you see here we have notebook tensor uh, tensor board volumes and all of that pipelines everything so this is kind of a, a you know if you have seen uh, SageMaker uh, on AWS it's kind of same but uh, it has uh, SageMaker has a lot of different uh, flexibility and features but this kind of a nice environment for you to manage uh, you know inside out so you have more granularity and it's all running uh, on Kubernetes, which is great. So now if you see here, we don't have any volume. So let's create a volume. And this is the volume which we are going to use for our for keeping our training data set. So let's give some name. And let's give some size, let's say 100 GB. And here we can select uh, the storage class and we can have access mode as maybe read write many which EFS uh, supports. That means you can access this volume from multiple pods. So let's create it and it is going to be in pending state because we have not yet, uh, you know, uh, we are not yet uh, attached uh, this volume to any of the uh, Jupyter notebook or any of the other uh, training jobs. So let's go ahead and create a Jupyter notebook. Let's give some name. Let's say notebook one. And here we can select the image, but let it be uh, the default. And it is going to create a, a, a volume uh, for its own use, basically the home directory for this notebook. And since our default uh, storage class is EBS, so it is going to uh, create that uh, PVC from this uh, storage volume, uh, a GP2 uh, type of storage class. Uh, but we are going to attach uh, the ex uh, uh, one external volume which is going to be the data set uh, EFS volume which we have just created. So let's uh, attach this and click on launch. So if you see, it's already uh, got created. Uh, and if I come to volume now, you will see that uh, the data set is also, uh, the status is now uh, bonded. And we also have a, another volume, which is for the home directory. And this is coming from GP2. Uh, and now if I come to EFS and click on refresh here, you will see one access point, which got created dynamically by the CSI driver. So let's go back to our notebook and connect to our notebook. And what we are going to do now is uh, we are going to uh, run a training job, but before that we need to have some data set, right? So what we are going to do is we are going to create a Jupyter notebook and we are going to download some uh, data set. So uh, I already have the location of the data set and it is basically uh, a simple uh, uh, data set which contains a uh, images of different flowers and what we are going to do is we will run a CNN job or basically uh, a deep learning um, uh, a training job uh, which will identify the type of flowers uh, you know given an image of a flower so this is a very tiny uh, uh, training data set and uh, the, the focus is not on machine learning part but the idea is what I really want to uh, you know give you is how you can make use of Qflow to run your training jobs. Mm -hmm. So if you uh, get inside this uh, data set and this data set is coming from the EFS uh, storage, uh, if you uh, get inside this, you will see different types of flowers, rose, sunflower, and uh, so on. So let's wait for this to get downloaded. And once this is over, what we will do is we will go to uh, uh, Qflow and start a training job. So as you can see, uh, the training data set uh, has been downloaded and we have uh, images uh, uh, saved inside uh, this uh, EFS data set uh, uh, share, right? So we are all good to start the uh, training job. So let me close this uh, Jupyter Notebook 
because we don't need that the only idea uh, you know only thing we wanted to do is to download the data set which is now stored in uh, you know in this efs file system via this access point so now let's go back uh, to our console and let's start uh, the training job so just to recap where are we now uh, if we open this uh, this architecture we have uh, saved the training data set on efs and all our, all we need to do is uh, you know run this training job and for this i already created a, a deep learning uh, image uh, which contains the uh, you know the code for uh, running the training job and uh, we we have to build it locally on cloud9 instance and then i pushed it to ecr repository which i am going to show you uh, and then uh, we can simply go ahead and run a training job on qflow uh, where i have specified the training data set location as uh, the data set which we have created and the image to use is the same image which is in ecr right so let me show you uh, the image first so if you see, if you run docker image ls you will see that uh, we have one image uh, or a repository inside that we have this image uh, saved and all this code um, uh, like all the uh, docker file for this um, it's there in the github repo which i'm going to share uh, with you uh, you know uh, towards the end but if you want to quickly look into the docker file it's simply uh, you know we are just uh, pulling one uh, a tensorflow uh, base image we are copying this training script uh, which is located here and we are just uh, you know uh, giving this as an entry point that's all it's nothing fancy and inside this uh, training script uh, we are uh, running that uh, uh, you know machine learning training so let's go to uh, ecr and this is my repository uh, my repo and if you see here uh, this is the same uh, repository right in my account and uh, inside that we have uh, our uh, image right this is the image that we are going to use so let's uh, uh, let's run it so uh, so the training job is basically we have to, we are going to run on uh, a qflow so it's also defined uh, as an, a yaml file uh, so this is inside this notebooks uh, inside this so um, one second yeah inside this training samples in the tf job.yaml so if i just uh, open this up you will see uh, you know this is a, uh, a tensorflow job um, this is the name of the uh, job and uh, we are going to create two replicas that means when we execute this you will see uh, two pods getting created for this training job and if you see here this is the image we are using and the most important part the training data set because uh, we have this training will be uh, running on some data set right and this is the same data set which we have downloaded a while back uh, inside this uh, data set uh, pvc so if we run this uh, kubectl get pvc uh, uh, let me just grab the namespace if you see this uh, this is the uh, data set uh, uh, pvc and uh, this is the same pvc which we are mounting on this uh, uh, training job right so this training job is going to create a pod right and that pod will have our efs storage uh, attached and mounted and it will be mounted inside this uh, you know train directory and in our training script we have mentioned uh, you know uh, that uh, uh, go and read this directory for your training job so let me open this training.py uh, and if you see it here uh, we are mentioning where is our training uh, data set located okay so let me go back to our cli and let's run this job so we are inside this ml folder and the training uh, job is uh, inside this training samples directory so we can simply run this kubectl apply and the training uh, you know and the location of our uh, definition file uh, so now if we see uh, uh, the training job uh, it it is now uh, in the pod creation phase it is yet to start uh, the training but we see that uh, there are two pods uh, um, which it created 
so we can even run kubectl get part um, minus n the namespace and you will see that these two uh, these are the two parts uh, which are running and these are the exact same two parts which we have uh, name that we have given image classification pvc so it's worker zero and worker one because the replica is two uh, so now what we can do is uh, we can even see the logs by getting into one of these uh, workers so let's run this and if you see the training job is already completed because it was a tiny data set and uh, we just ran it for two epochs and if you see that the the accuracy is uh, not at all great but that's okay so the idea is basically to show you how you can make use of uh, you know qflow to run your training job you know without any hindrance so our training job got over and now if you see the parts you see that uh, it's a not ready state i mean meaning it's not running now so it's already over and what we can do is we can even uh, you know delete uh, this uh, uh, you know whole deployment so by just uh, you know we can just copy this and maybe to delete this job we can just say delete and let's copy this and run it right so if you see uh, uh, here uh, we what Qflow allows us to do is uh, it allows us to scale our uh, machine learning workflow, uh, you know, dynamically. So we don't have to uh, worry about the infrastructure that is needed for your uh, ML uh, training. Right? And uh, with EFS, you get the flexibility to uh, attach uh, or use the storage uh, for your uh, team, for different data scientists, uh, or maybe for different users, uh, saving your training uh, data set in one central location which can be accessed by uh, you know uh, different uh, people right so if you see here in the EFS uh, uh, this is the place where I have uh, my training data set so you can not only access this from your uh, you know uh, Qflow uh, users but also you can let's say for troubleshooting you want to uh, you know attach this to an EC2 instance and want to explore you know uh, something so maybe you want to see uh, you know what the training data set is for some ad hoc uh, you know uh, task so you can always uh, click on attach and uh, uh, you know copy this command and mount this file system as an nfs uh, uh, storage into your ec2 instance and provided that you have all the permissions granted uh, so the idea here is uh, when you use EFS, the same storage you can access from uh, you know containers, from your EC2 instances, uh, Lambda functions, and all of that, which gives you a lot of flexibility, right? So, and it you don't have to uh, provision it beforehand. So, if you mention, if you see here, uh, nowhere uh, you know we uh, we mention the size of the file system, right? So it will scale up and scale down, uh, you know, automatically. Uh, although when we created this uh, volume, uh, we have we we um, mentioned the size uh, just to make Kubernetes happy because uh, for Qflow or for Kubernetes in general, um, you need to mention the size of the PVCs. But uh, that is not uh, we, uh, from the EKS standpoint or from EFS standpoint. Uh, you know it is just ignored because uh, there is no requirement for size. Right, so that's all about it. And if you want to go through this whole demo, uh, this is the uh, location. So you can get into Amazon EFS Developer Zone. Uh, inside that, uh, we have a machine learning with Qflow uh, on EKS with EFS section. And uh, you know, this is uh, you know, we, this tutorial will guide you through uh, setting up the whole environment on Cloud9 and also the uh, training job and few other things. So, so if you want to try out, uh, feel free to go over here and uh, give it a try. And to come to this page, um, you can go into this uh, landing page, uh, yeah, Amazon EFS Developer Zone. And if you scroll down, you will get some information about EFS, uh, like what it is, how it works, in a little bit of details. And if you scroll down, you will see a section of uh, different integration. Uh, so this is Amazon EFS with containers. And here you can see uh, machine learning at scale using Qflow. So you can always click here and you will go to that page which we have just seen and uh, you know give uh, you know do it uh, in your account. Okay, so uh, that's about it. Uh, so let's go back to our slide. All right, so um, another that you've learned a little bit about, uh, you know, how uh, you can make use of EFS with EKS for Qflow, uh, there are plenty of uh, other uh, 
uh, you know kubernetes or container specific tutorials which are available on amazon efs developer zone which uh, we have just seen a while back uh, during the demo but feel free to access this page and uh, you know share your experience and if you would like to contribute uh, you know you know maybe you can uh, 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 send a pr request with your demo and we will uh, add that in the repository um, so thank you so much for your time. Uh, I hope you uh, you learned a little bit uh, about Qflow, uh, EKS, and EFS. And I look forward to uh, you know hear from you about your feedback once you uh, you know uh, do this in your account and uh, share your experience. Thank you so much once again, and uh, have a wonderful day ahead.